Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. Today's episode is a very special extra episode. I decided to release this episode earlier because I am just so excited, super stoked that there is a new metal brewery here in Montreal and I had to go there as soon as they opened and I wanted to release this episode as soon as possible to shine some light on them. Get ready people, this is Vox and Hops episode number 206 with Jean-Michel Tisseur of Microbrasserie Mutoid. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, I am with Jean-Michel Tissard, the head brewer of Mutoid, a brand new metal-themed brewery here in Montreal. When you guys opened, I, I had to come right away. You guys yeah. just opened. So, so let's start with an easy question. Yeah. How are you doing? Fine, I guess. We're pretty stoked to finally be open after, you know, all that mess of uh, the COVID, the COVID, of course. And uh, yeah, finally, after like uh, almost a year and a half, we're finally able to sell beer to people. This is pretty cool. It must have been such a struggle and so frustrating. I can imagine it's like being a musician and you write an album, you get the album finished and then you can't release it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I, I guess it could be a, a, some kind of comparison because, like, I remember that this, this spring I was home and I couldn't even come to the to the, the, the place, you know, so I was like, fuck, I just want this, this this project to go on, but just have to keep, stay home and think about everything, you know, because I, I, I also had so many things to think about because it was right in the middle of the, of the construction, you know. So it was kind of weird to stay home and not be able to do anything, but yeah. Well, here we are now. You guys just, just, just opened. Uh, I'm super stoked about it. For any of you people that listen to the Luc Beaulieu Yakima Chief Hops, um, the main dude for the Canada rep for Yakima Chief Hops episode that I had, he was hinting at a new metal brewery that was going to open yeah. in Montreal, and it was you guys. So, so I'm yeah. super stoked that it happened. Uh, let's start with a very, very simple thing. What are we drinking right now? Uh, we're drinking our, our killer beer. It's, uh, it's called Cult. It's a, it's a kind of a young uh, lager, if you want. Uh, it's one of the first beer I brew when I was able to, and it didn't it it, it didn't lager very long, so that's why you get you see it's kind of like a bit cloudy. Now it's getting a bit clearer because it's been a while and it's since it's in keg, but so yeah, uh, it has a bit more more body or a fuller mouthfeel than a, a Ellis would be, uh, I guess. So that's why we, we decided to call it a killer beer, but it has that typical, you know, uh, noble hops, uh, aromas and and taste to it. What I brewed it with uh, Tetnag hops and uh, a German uh, lager yeast, with, and it was like long fermented cold. So it came out pretty pretty clean. I think it's it's kind of cool to to see that the, the, the product after like all this time and we're pretty happy with how it came out very yeah. cool let's let's get this see what this has got yeah. let's see it taste cheers. it cheers cheers our our weird covid mask interview not cheersing ourselves it's, wow. it's i can't wait till it's just over <laughs> let's see what yeah. it's got oh yeah it's, it's crisp super clean yeah a little hot bite a little multi bite i love it i love it i love yeah, it I love it's it. kind of well balanced and it doesn't have that like you know those big like sulfurish like uh, vibe of some German lagers, but it's it's nice to, to yeah to see it <laughs> how it turned out. Yeah, that's very cool. Why why would this have been the very first beer that you wanted to present to the public? Uh, this is uh, kind of uh, the way we we, we want to brew uh, or the, the way we want to go with our beers. Um, we want to mostly like brew. Uh, sessionable beer, easy drinking beer, and of course, lagers are, are right up there with that that kind of uh, of beer. So it's, I guess, it's 
<laughs> it's we only want to have like simple beer, well-made simple beer, and yeah, I personally I prefer like the German style lagers. Sorry. Uh, so this is why that beer was the first to come out. Oh, oh, simple as that. Yeah. Very very cool. I wanted to hear your whole brewer story. Yeah. What? Why do you brew beer? How did you start brewing beer? Yeah. Your whole journey, please. Yeah. So it all started in 2011. I was studying uh, water treatment, and I applied to a job at McCoslin, and they they hired me, and they took me uh, as a brewer right away. And they told me like, yeah, we're gonna take care of you. We're gonna show you like how the, the brew house works and all that stuff. So uh, I stayed there for a year and a half almost. And then I went to study at the outside of Montreal and I came back in 2013 when the Benelux in Verdun uh, opened and they were looking for a uh, Uh, assistant brewer with uh, Tico. I don't know if you know him, but uh, and then uh, I started at Benelux in 2013, and I was uh, assistant for Tico for about eight months, and then Benelux opened their production brewery, the Brasserie de Canal. I guess you you know them, yeah. And the, I has to be shipped there, and uh, that's what happened. And uh, from 2014 to 2000, almost four years. I was there, and then I left to concentrate on this pr very project here. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah and I, I brew a bit uh, after that at Brossard de Montréal, but, you know, only to pay the rent and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was still, still a nice experience, though, still. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because I was going to say, is there a moment, like, you feel that is selling out, going to brew for a big company like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and the switch uh, with Molson uh, was uh, around that time I came in. So, okay. But I, it was interesting because I, I did some stuff I never did before in the other breweries. So, uh, you know, you never stop learning in a brewery. So it was, well, it was good for me, I guess. That's amazing. And I love how many people started out at St. Ambois, McCausland yeah. Brewing, and yeah. they now have their own establishments, such uh -huh. as uh, Vox and Hops alumni, uh, Sean Didier's from yeah. Avant-Garde, yeah. and uh, many, many, many more. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's yeah. like a little school yeah, where course. you guys exactly. all learn so much. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And people uh, who were there, well, at the time I was there, were so nice and so welcoming and truly wanted to show you, you know, Well, it's done, and they they just did that, you know, with That's David Brophy awesome. and uh, Mike Harrison from Brossard Montréal. Amazing brewer, amazing, the knowledge, all the knowledge he has, and he taught me so much. Same with Tico, uh, I would say, uh, from uh, Benux Verdun. These are probably my two biggest, like, uh, teachers, I could say, or masters. <laughs> That's Tito amazing. Mike I love it. I love it. How about uh, I want to dive into being from Montreal or being from around Montreal. Yeah. Um, I, I have an idea of what your first beer was, but I would like to hear from you. What is the very first beer that you drank in your life? Do you remember that first beer? Uh, you mean like a craft beer? Craft beer craft no, beer? no, no. We're going way back oh, wait, to whoa, the my first God. beer. I think it was like uh, Blue Dry. Something like that, like, you know, that 6.1%. And weirdly, uh, I don't know why, but at that age, like at 15 or around that, I felt like I was drinking more than now, like big time. I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Like, I remember at that age could like drink a 10 of these, like blue dry <laughs> <in> a single <laughs> night. And yeah, so... Yeah, that would be it, I guess. It's because we were young and we could rebound faster. Yeah. And, and we, we didn't necessarily have anything to do the next day. Yeah. So, so right. now we can afford to suffer. Mm. That's, <laughs> that's it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, What right. would have been that first craft beer experience? Um, I, the one that comes up to me right now is uh, Rue des Epices from Zutzia. Yeah. I think this is one of the beer, the first beer that really shook me and or really made me realize that what craft beer could be and how tasteful it was and how special it was, you know, compared to the uh, all the other big breweries. So, yeah, Rue des Epices really like changed 
changed my life. And after that, maybe comes the album also from Jude Ciel. These were the two. Take me to why exactly did you guys decide to start your own brewery? There, oh, yeah. there are so many breweries in Montreal mm -hmm. as there is right now. What was that whole process of, I'm going to open this, you guys are three people that are involved in this brewery, correct me if I'm wrong. And yeah, we're three working uh, yeah, to make it run. Actually, so take yeah. me through that whole decision from, from the first early whispers of the idea yeah. um, to now. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 honestly, I think that every brewer, every professional brewer, or not only the professional, of course, the own brewers too, all have that, that dream that they cherish of starting their own brewery. I think it, it applies to a lot of a lot of people who brew. And it, it, I kind of felt it like when I was at Benelux, like the, after the time I was there, I kind of felt like, hey, uh, maybe one day I could start my own thing, you know? And then one year, I think it was around 2015, I went in Denver and I went to True, True Brewing. Like, I'm sure you know them, yeah? Hell yeah. Yeah, so I went to True and I was fucking hooked with the, the idea. Totally, I was like, "Yo, man, this is this is the shit, you know. This is this is so inspiring, and this is just a cool vibe." And I was like, "Montreal has, you know, their nice metal bar, like the Fufun or you know some others, but not breweries, you know." So I was like, "Yo, uh, I could I could try this, you know. That would be so fucking nice." And then uh, during all the years I was brewing, I had this idea, and. At one point, I was like more and more dedicated to it, and I been working on a business plan for almost a year while I was brewing at Boston Montreal. And then, when uh, everything kind of everything went all kind of went good for with this project, like I uh, found this uh, one time one day I, I started looking seriously into to buildings and stuff, places. And then uh, I found this place was for rent, and I was like, yeah, okay, I have to try this. And then uh, I, I rushed up by finishing my business plan, and uh, I was accepted at a, a loan from a, a bank. I found someone uh, to help me with that. So this is how it came out. That's sick, just a hustle, hustle, hustle. Yeah. I, um, take me to that decision you needed your own place. You're brewing in someone else's house. Is that something that's frustrating? I, I see brewers as artists. So you hmm. guys working in someone else's brewery, you're an artist, but you must paint yeah. that person's picture. Is that frustrating? Is that why a lot of brewers tend to want to open their own brewery? Um, yeah, yeah, maybe I think, I guess, but the, the, the main idea of, of the Mutaid was really to 100% do a brew pub, you know, brew pub style. So this is, this is right there, very different from people, I think, who want to start, like, going on a market and on shelves and, you know, even with, with contract or... So doing a brew pub, it's like you don't have a choice to have your own, you know, equipment, but... Like you said, um, brewers are artists. I I, am half, I half agree with with you because I, I feel like you still have to follow a certain uh, very strict like uh, process when, while brewing. So yes, it's a creative process, but it still has to be like done the right way. You know, you know what I mean. So yeah, what uh, yeah, if if you want to brew your beers at another place and you can't even brew it, I think. You're right. It's maybe not the the best way a brewer I want to go, for sure. Yeah. No, no, it's amazing. And I love the... I stepped in here, and it's amazing. It's, it's awesome that you brought up True, because I've heard... I've never been to True. I've interviewed Zach twice for the podcast oh, yeah. so far. Shout out to Zach. Uh, I've had some of his beers, but I've never been to True. But oh, everything yeah. that I've heard about True is you walk in there... Oh, yeah. Their beers are awesome. And they're blasting extreme metal. Yeah. And when I walked in here tonight, that's exactly the experience that I had. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, yes, finally. And I was like, I'm home. <laughs> A place for me. Yeah. I, I, I love it. I love nice. it. So, so talk to me about your relationship with metal, being a young metalhead. Yeah. What would have been the very first metal bands that you got into and where are you at now? Yeah. Uh, first metal band was Metallica, of course. Well, of course, I mean, like uh, many people. 
Uh, I started listening to Metallica, I don't know, around 13. And then I had it kind of a plateau until my early 20s. And then after that, I became more and more interested in simply in like discovering bands and I started going to shows. And it kind of went all naturally, you know. It, it's, to me, it's kind of the, 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 the wavelength that makes me like vibrate, you know. I don't know. It's just natural. And right now, today, I listen to all kind of all kind of stuff. I would say stuff I prefer than others, and like everybody. But uh, I guess I I enjoy just listening music that just make me feel something or make me like that connects to me. You know, whatever that the style it is, even outside of metal. That's awesome. Yeah, and w the nicest thing about metal to me is like all the the subgenre that you have, and how much like specific or deep you can go within a certain style, and it's awesome. And all these bands are bands can be so much creative and have just their own little you know twists that makes you like that hooks you. And this is the kind of stuff I like about. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, what would have been like your favorite album of 2020 so far? Oh, 2020. That's a good question. Uh, I've been so much busy with that, with the new toy. Uh, 2020. I've been listening to a lot of the uh, Birth of Violence of Chelsea Wolf lately. Hell yeah. Um, this is the first that comes to my mind because it's, I listen to it so much. Uh, yeah, that would be it. Like, awesome. you like that? Just what I would love. Would be like, love Chelsea yeah, Wolf. That would be love her. My yeah. choice. Um, let's talk about the location. Yeah. Why did you decide to set up here? I've heard that this was an old pizzeria. Exactly. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. Talk um, to me about the neighborhood. Talk to me about yeah. setting up here. Uh, it's, uh, my neighbor and a good friend of mine uh, works on uh, in Oshlaga and he takes uh, the Prefontaine Metro every every morning. I, I spotted a, a place not too far from here, more east on Oshlaga, which is now the retro gaming. Uh, yeah, uh, th this place was for for rent, so I visited uh, th that spot, and it didn't really work out because it was a bit too small, and you know. So anyway, I asked my my good friend like, hey, if you ever see like s something like around, especially like in this building, like something for rent or whatever, because I remember that uh, you know there was a cafe now in the corner, Cafe Pref, and that place was for rent for for a while, and I saw it and I was like, ah, oh, still too sh too small, you know. So I said to my friend like, hey, uh, if you ever see something for rent here, like just 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 keep your eyes open, you know. And like seriously, a month a month after or so, he sent me a picture, and it was that big for rent uh, sign in the window. So I was like, no shit. And the next very next day, I came here, and uh, the rest like all went to. That's amazing. The, yeah. That's amazing. So it's a pretty awesome uh, and very very lucky, I would say. Uh, turns of event to have been able to do all this like uh, yeah it's amazing and we have you know there's a skate park right in front we uh, the, the skate shop right right uh, is our neighbors the Roland skate shop so there's a pretty nice vibe around here and uh, Emil and Alex Emil Richard and Alex Leduc my two partners they live in Jean Schlager okay, okay. so this is cool too I, I'm from I live in Pointe Saint Charles but um yeah, it's cool to just to see like friends coming around and be so 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 excited and all that. Like I said, the the vibe around is is super cool. Very now. very cool. Yeah. How is the Quebec craft beer scene, or at least the Montreal craft beer yeah. scene, been receptive towards you so far? Uh, great. Uh, people from uh, the neighborhood, the Oshlaga, came uh, visit us. Espace Public, Vanguard also came. Uh, which is cool. Um, it's uh, I guess it's it's hard to really feel it because uh, it's the COVID. So you know people are not 
don't come out much. So, but still, we we st we still had a couple of people and friends uh, coming to say hi, which was really cool. Yeah, very cool. It's like your baby, you know. You're, oh yeah, of <laughs> you course, had a baby, yeah. and and all your friends are gonna come and visit. Yeah, and and, and enjoy, and then you're gonna serve them delicious drinks to yeah, go with that's, it. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's the only what we want to do here is like just have a great place to hang out and have fun, you know. Like, if if there wasn't COVID, if you weren't having all these insane restrictions, yeah. what would have your launch look like? Oh, it would have been probably uh, the beginning of the summer. Okay, really? So the garage door would have been uh, all the way open for sure. And uh, would have been the uh, same, like same kind of beer we're going to release uh, in the next uh, weeks. Like easy drinking beer with a a lot of people just enjoying enjoying the place that's amazing i yeah. love it i love pretty it simple it's it's actually a pretty simple project actually like you know we have that small brew house and four fermenters and just brew beer for people that come that want to come hang out here and listen to heavy music you said easy drinking uh, numerous times throughout this chat uh does that mean you're not going to be embarking on the whole hype train, yeah. chasing the hype train of the, the hazies, yeah. uh, the smoothies, the pastry yeah. stouts. Is you that something right. you're not interested yeah. in at all? Yeah, uh, yeah you, saw, you saw it uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah, we're not really, the, the, the three of us are not really into this hype, like you said. Like, we, we know, we appreciate some of the stuff out there, of course, like those juicy IPA. We, we love to drink them, of course, but it's not our favorite thing and it's not the things we want to brew. And same with the, all the smoothie stuff. And it's not, it's not a, the, 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 the way we want to go. We just want to like, do simple beers, simple beers well made the most we can. And yeah, and we have a, a kind of small brewery too, so we don't have the space to like have some barrel or so barrel aging and you know sour stuff or you know it's not gonna be easy here. Or if we do it, it's gonna be a very very small amount every every couple of months or so. Mm. Yeah. Or it could be in a collab with someone. Yeah, where you go to someone else's house. Yeah. Uh, which would lead me to yeah. what would be some breweries that you would love to do a collaboration oh, with? That's a nice question. Uh, we would like to, to, to brew a collab with our friends at Espas Public for sure, because we're neighbors and we're the only two brew pubs in uh, in Oshlaga. So, uh, uh, so, you know what? Uh, right now, the, 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 the thing I would love to do with the first thing I would, love to, I would love to do would just be a simple collab with Espas Public down on Ontario. Just because brew pub to brew pub, you know? And yeah, quickly, like, yeah, that would be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. How about a collab with some bands? If you could pick a band and make a beer for them, yeah. what band would that be? Oh my God. I guess it would be a band from Montreal. Uh, you don't, it doesn't have to be, but I, I, that was my next question. <laughs> It's a good question because I don't, you know, I'm not from from the music scene, so I don't know people from the music scene much. So it's hard for me to, you know, you know spot on per people exactly. But bands, like, just if you think about a band, it probably would be a band like fucking old school legendary bands, like I don't know, Carcass or something like that. I don't know. I really don't know. This is a good question, but it's what, what style of a beer would you make for Carcass? <laughs> oh yeah, that's not, that's a good question. It would have to be, uh, yeah, it couldn't it could not be like super easy drinking. It would have to be like fucking bitter or something like maybe something red too for for the blood. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes. If you could just pitch Mutoid to the world. Yeah. What would be your, your elevator pitch that you want everybody to know about this place? Uh, same as I said like a, one minute ago or so. It's a simple place to come hang out with simple well-made beer. And come with your friends and enjoy the, enjoy the music. It's, it's simply simple as that. Yeah. It's amazing.
I love it. I love it. Yeah. You guys are the Montreal Metal Brewery. Oh, yeah. Uh, shout out to Le Fermentor, of yeah. course, from L'Assomption. They yeah. are, you know, I love them to death, but they're in L'Assomption. They're yeah. not from Montreal. Yeah. So you guys are absolutely now the pinnacle metal brewery in Montreal. Well, uh, that, that, it's a good thing you, you talk about them because uh, that would be another collab that would be fun too. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about them, but uh, Emilio and Alex, one of the, of the two, I don't know which one knows uh Petrick, i think of course Petrick yeah. and uh, jeff of course so yeah i don't personally know them but i think one of of, of alex and emil knows them so yeah, yeah i think it's a question of time before we, we they're, reach they're out absolutely each other. amazing yeah. humans yeah, amazing yeah, yeah, humans yeah, 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 super fun no, yeah. no doubt yeah <laughs> one last question yeah um it probably never happens to you and you mentioned that you don't drink like you used to when you were 16 anymore <laughs> yeah i mean in the quantity yeah <laughs> But it happens to everyone every once in a while. What is your hangover cure? Oh, jeez. Fuck. I don't really have one. I kind of feel fucking like shit. <laughs> I, don't hang, I don't support hang, hangovers really well. My legs are fucking weak. I think I just... Um, I think I just can't be in my bed. I don't, I don't go sleep in my bed. When I wake up, I try to sleep, get back to sleep, but on my couch. Yep. Chained and like you know, <laughs> this is one thing I try. It doesn't so, work. <laughs> We think it's gonna make us feel better, right? Yeah. I can't be in the bed. I gotta go lie on the couch. Yeah, <laughs> and I think pills are work well on me because I, I never take them. So when I take them, they're like effective, you know. So yeah, I don't uh, maybe change change the the, the the place I sleep. <laughs> This is my... I don't know. Drink a lot of water too, of course. Like, I love like it. You. I love it. Jean-Michel, thank you so, so much for taking a some pleasure. time. Thank you to have uh, taken the time to come. Okay. Oh, I had to. I had to. Yeah. I, I would have been here sooner if I could have yeah, been. Yeah, of I, yeah. I, so. I, I super stoked and I can just only imagine this place after COVID just slammed. Oh, yeah. We dream about it. With, yeah. with a bunch of metal heads and, yeah. and local people well, from course, the area. Of course, every, every kind of people, uh, really, like, absolutely, everybody. Has, have there been people that have come in, just walk-ins that have been startled by the music? Some, yes, but no, uh, certainly not the majority. No, like, seriously, it's all kind of people, and this is perfect this way. Like, Of course, metal heads will come, of course, but it has to be to every, for everybody, you know? We're, we're not going to play music that that is so much loud that you can speak to your friends or whatever. It's just going to be like there and you won't maybe even notice it, you know? Mm. You just want to hang it with your friends. This I love it. it. Yeah, I love it. Long life to Mutoid. Yeah, thank you. Super stoked. Thank you so, so much. So stoked to have been with you. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. So stoked that there is a new metal-themed craft beer bar in my hometown. It is in Ushadaiga. I live in Villeray. It is rather close. I can walk there. That makes me very, very excited. Um, I just can't tell enough of you that if you enjoy nice, simple, clean Easy to drink brews. You should absolutely head to Mutoid, the new micro brew here in Montreal. But not only that, if you are a metalhead, go there because we now have our new home. There was just metal blaring. The people were just super nice and welcoming. Excellent humans making excellent beer. Head over to Mutoid and pick up some brews. If you enjoyed this Vox and Hops episode, I strongly suggest that you go and subscribe to it on the podcast platform of your choice. But not only that, you should take the time to rate and write a review for the podcast, because if you do that, more people just like you will discover the Vox and Hops podcast. Vox and Hops is brought to you by Sound Talent Media. I have one more episode coming at you tomorrow. But until then, remember to enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. Cheers, Vox and Hops heads. Oh, no, no, no.